Hi, I'm Shelly Berger Phillips at AwakeParent.com and I wanted to tell you a little bit about who I am and what I'm doing here and um, just share my story with you. So, <sighs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> such a weird thing putting videos up on the internet for all to see forever. <laughs> so, you know, I first got interested in child development when my baby brother was born when I was 11. And so, um, and then I turned 12 uh, that spring. And so I was babysitting and taking care of this little infant. And within two years, he went from this helpless, tiny infant to a walking, talking person. And it just kind of blew my mind how quickly that development happens. Um, my stepmom was a social worker. And so I think she also helped me develop this interest in child development and psychology. And I always thought I wanted to be a marine biologist. I was kind of obsessed with dolphins as a kid. And, um, being landlocked in the Midwest, I, um, you know, I, I just obsessed over dolphins. But the more I thought about what it was about the dolphins that interested me, it was really getting into their minds, like understanding their communication and their development. And so when I went to college at University of Illinois and got a C <laughs> in my first biology class, um, you know, and then A's in all my psychology classes, I thought, okay, well, maybe psychology is actually more of an interest. Um, and so I just dove into cognitive development. I worked in Rene Bayarjan's lab at the University of Illinois. I worked with Judy Deloche and Kevin Miller on other child development projects and research. I just loved understanding what's really happening inside those tiny minds. Um, in infancy and early childhood, and then it informed me so much about what I could do to provide the best environment for my future kids. So it was a win-win for me. Um, but working in the lab and doing my final research project at the end of my undergrad, I just, I, I was so bored just being stuck in the lab with my data. <laughs> I was like, Get me out of here. So I decided not to go on for my PhD at that time and just to get a job. And so I'm looking around going, okay, well, what do I want to do? And I started looking at daycares and preschools because I, I just love being with children. So I visited this one daycare and it was a complete madhouse. It was chaotic and loud and kids were all over the place and kids were separated in very small age groups. And it just felt odd to me, <laughs> to put it uh, bluntly. And so, and then I visited the first Montessori school that I had ever experienced as an adult. It turns out I went to Montessori school when I was about 18 months old for six months, but I didn't have a really firm memory of that at the time. So I walk into this Montessori school and I, I'm ob observing through the window and all these children are engaged in meaningful work. They're quiet. It's not chaotic. Everyone is focused on what they're doing. Some kids are playing together and singing and, you know, reading and uh, practicing their writing and other kids are doing different things around the classroom. And I just thought, this looks like a real community environment for the children. So I was hooked from that very first moment and luckily got hired at that Montessori school and worked at Montessori schools for the next four years. Um, and just love, I just love that the Montessori philosophies. I just dug into some of those ideas and philosophies a lot during those years. Um, and so that, so I'm, I definitely would consider myself Montessori inspired. Um, and, and certainly the ideas of self-directed learning and following the child and creating an environment conducive to learning. These are all things that I implement both in my home and my homeschool. Um, so that got me all fired up about Montessori working in those schools. But then there I was working at this preschool and realizing that these children um, were encouraged to be at school 
from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. These are three-year-old children, and it's because the bottom line of the school, you know, the school has got to make money. And in order to make the most money, they need the kids to be there the longest. And so that whole dynamic of, you know, of encouraging children to be away from their kids for that long, I mean, children to be away from their parents for that long, um, it just started feeling a little odd to me, a little... um, misaligned with my heart. So I thought, okay, well, who do I most want to support? And what came up was um, stay-at-home moms. I most wanted to support stay-at-home moms. And so I became a nanny. And so I helped I helped these stay-at-home moms with their infants and young children and those first few years of development. And then I really got uh, an inside view into the home life right? Because I hadn't had kids yet at the time. And and the parents that I worked for kept asking me, you know, how do you set these firm limits? But then they also love and respect you all at the same time. And, you know, it, it's tricky for moms. And now being a mom, I get it on a whole new level, that emotional pull that your children have on you, um, that it's hard to set a really firm and clear limit with kids sometimes. And then when we do, sometimes we tend to go overboard and and make it a really um, harsh limit, (laughs) you know, uh, something we're not willing to even negotiate around. And so that finding that balance of how to set limits and how to be compassionate, how to have fun and play, but also have ease and adult time and all of these things. You know, parents kept asking me questions and I kept, you know, coming up with some kind of answers and AwakeParent.com was born out of that. So here you find me on the internet, um, you know, (laughs) not the most tech savvy of people, just, you know, doing my best to get the information out of my brain and into yours. I've read so many parenting books. I I then went on to get a master's degree in humanities and leadership from New College of California, and uh, and I wrote my thesis on connection-based parenting approaches. So, which, you know, for me, was just a great excuse to read all the parenting books that I wanted to read before becoming a parent. Um, Finished my master's. All the while, also discovering personal growth and and personal development work, um, and then doing that really um, transformative inner work with my friends at Authentic World and Authentic Man Program and Authentic Woman Experience, helping to foster and create those those courses and. Um, I still do quite a bit of dating coaching, actually, life coaching and dating coaching with the Authentic Man program and Authentic World. Uh, But my my greatest passion is to support parents. Uh, I once did a vision quest where I went out on a hill, Native American vision quest, out on a hill with no food or water for a few days. And um, I had a really profound experience where... um, Gosh, I'm a little nervous sharing this with all of you right here on the internet. (laughs) My grandmother, uh, who had passed away, came to me and I said, you know, Grandma, what's my purpose? And she said, Shelly, your purpose is to nurture and support families. And so essentially she said, get off your butt, get your master's degree (laughs) and get to work. And I said, okay, Grandma, you got it. So, um, so that is my story. That's what I'm doing and what I'm about and why I'm here. And this is getting to be a really long video, so I'm going to stop there. But please know that you can check out my blog. You can go over to the parent coaching page and sign up for some coaching. You could um, comment on blog posts. Go over to my Facebook page. There's all kinds of ways that you can engage. You're always welcome to email me about anything. I love to just be in connection with you and support you in any way I can. So don't hesitate. Just hang out, um, reach out, and ask me any questions, and, and keep an eye out for new stuff coming up. All right. Thanks so much for being here, and have a great day.